Hello everyone, you're watching the My Living Worlds Ants channel. I'm Jake, your friendly ant keeper and biologist. Today's video is about ants coming out of hibernation, and what to do when your queens and workers are ready to warm up. Welcome to the My Living Worlds Ants channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. So in today's video, why hibernation is important, bringing queens out of hibernation, taking a colony out of hibernation, why queens haven't laid any eggs? Could your ants be dead? And what about exotic ants? And dirty tubes or nests? But before we get started, comment below on what species you have coming out of hibernation. Many ant species have to go through hibernation. This process is vital to the survival of many ant species. There are many tropical species of ants which do not need to hibernate. For species that hibernate, it gives the queen ant a chance to take a few months rest from constant egg laying as well as giving the workers a chance to take a break. This yearly process allows longevity of the colony to be increased. For ants which have to hibernate, they start to shut down when colder temperatures kick in. They will start to reduce activity and huddle in clusters to maintain body heat with the queen and brood being in the centre. You can watch my video on hibernating your queen ant here. For a queen's first hibernation, the outcome can be mixed. After nuptial flights from the summer, if the queen managed to lay eggs and raise her first generation of workers, this can greatly improve their chances. But if you're worried because your queen didn't lay any eggs, or brood hasn't developed yet, don't worry. Sometimes, there will be queens that lay eggs after hibernation. So when preparing your ants for coming out of hibernation, firstly, it depends on how you hibernated them. If you kept them in a cooler room, you can introduce them to a warmer room, and they will start to warm up soon. If you kept them in a fridge, you can slowly increase the temperature a few degrees a day. With both methods, you can observe the queen, and if she hasn't already woken up naturally, she should start to become more active again. Be careful not to stress her out, as she might still be sleeping. Once the queen starts to look fully active, you can try feeding a queen some honey or honey water as well as protein like chopped up mealworms or protein jelly. Most queens will have been fed enough or stored enough to last the winter, but most likely your queen will be very eager to have her first drop of honey in a long time. I always find that my ants absolutely go crazy as soon as they wake up. If you are bringing a colony out of hibernation, the process is the same. Make sure to slowly increase the temperature and watch the colony's activity start to increase. As they start to wake up, they will begin to continue with their tasks, like grooming the queen and brood. Some colonies will hatch all of their brood before winter, so they don't die out, but other ants will develop winter brood, which will hatch as a new generation before springtime. Nevertheless, whether your freshly hibernated colony has brood or not, no doubt they will be busy in no time, and many workers will be eager to forage for food. So, you have a queen ant that hasn't laid any eggs, there are a few reasons for this. The least likely possibility is that they are infertile, but this should be ruled out until all other factors are addressed. If the queen has been too stressed out, or the nesting conditions are not right, she may not lay at all. The queen may have decided to hibernate first, so when bringing her out of hibernation, you have to be patient. Usually after a week to a month, you can expect the queen to lay a fresh batch of eggs. If she doesn't for some unknown reason, then the last possibility is that your queen might be infertile. But most of the time, this isn't the case. Sometimes, when you take your queen or colony out of hibernation, they might not make it. This can happen sometimes. But before you give up all hope, double check that they are actually dead. Many ant keepers can accidentally mistake their dead ants for sleeping ants. As mentioned earlier, as the temperature increases, the ants activity will slowly increase. But as always, it requires patience, as when you first get your colony or queen out of hibernation, they may look curled up and dead, but sometimes they're just asleep and haven't woken up yet. So always double check. If you get a macro lens or a magnifying glass, you can take a look at your queens or workers by seeing how their legs are crossed over and if there are any signs of mould. After checking, if you are certain your workers are dead, you can try making a new test tube for the queen to transfer. Otherwise, 
If the dead workers are left in the tube, they might start to mould. Although the queen will be left alone, after settling down, she will just continue to lay eggs and produce another generation. Sometimes, if the queen loses her first workers, she might give up, but most of the time, queens are very resilient and they will come back much stronger. If it is the queen that has died, and she still has workers, then unfortunately there isn't much to do. Without the queen, the colony is rendered useless, and in most cases, other colonies or queens will not adopt these workers, unless they are polygynous colonies with multiple queens, or gamagate species. The best thing you can do is to keep feeding these workers until they die of natural causes, and just give them the best life possible. And any dead ants that remain, providing there is no mould, you can put them into boiling water, then feed them to other colonies. So, what about many of you ant keepers keeping exotic species that don't hibernate? Well, all I can say is, for those of you who decided to keep European species of ants, although there is a waiting game over winter, it can be a nice break from maintaining so many colonies. After bringing your ants out of hibernation, you may notice that the test tube or nest your queen or ants are in is mouldy or dirty. After a week or two of bringing your ants out of hibernation, you can then move them to a clean test tube or nest. You can do this with multiple methods. The first is the light method, where you place the new setup in the dark, and you place the old setup in the light. Another method is to use heat mats, or a heat lamp. This will increase the temperature in one area, making the ants more likely to move. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful for bringing your ants out of hibernation. Happy ant keeping and see you in my next video.